So just a real quick review. You probably wish I would have done this before the quiz, but real quick review on the sinus. What makes a rhythm a sinus rhythm? What is one of the key landmarks of a sinus rhythm? A P wave. A P wave, but not just a P wave because some of these are going to have P waves. A rounded, positive, uniform P wave. That's going to be the key, especially on some of these rhythms. They're going to have P waves, but they're going to look a lot different. Okay? So we're actually going to start getting into some of the... Um, like arrhythmia type deal here. We'll, we'll look at um, a lot of stuff that we can actually treat, a lot of stuff that we can't treat, a lot of stuff that we're just looking at that's saying, hey, that looks funky. Hopefully they don't die because there's nothing I'm going to do for it, right? So, going back to the SA node or the SA rhythms, we know that the origin of those rhythms whether it is a normal sinus rhythm where he follows all the rules, or it is a sinus brady, or a sinus tacky where they break the rate rule, or a sinus arrhythmia where they break the rhythm rule, or it could be a sinus arrest where there is just a period of no rule following or breaking at all, right? It's just electrical silence within that. But we all know that the origin or the start of that, the pacing site of that rhythm, that is a sinus rhythm, starts where? The SA node. At the SA node, okay? So, there's a couple of reasons why you may start seeing rhythms that start in the atria. Now, remember a couple of properties about electrical cells or cardiac electrical cells. Remember they, automaticity, right? They have automaticity, so what does that mean? Generate their own. Yeah, they have the ability to self-propagate is the technical uh, term, but they've got the ability to generate their own electrical conduction without any type of stimulus. Okay. They also have conductivity, right? Which means that if they generate that conduction, it's going to be transferred, right? And then contractility is a mechanical function, so I'm going to leave that one out right now. But the other one was irritability or excitability, right? They're, they're both, you can use those terms interchangeably. And basically, irritability, excitability means that they're going to react to something that is stimulating them, whether it is an outside influence like drugs or hypoxia, or it is an intrinsic influence where the SA node fails. All right? So we talked about with our electrical conduction system, when we're talking a little bit about anatomy, we talked about the fact that the SA node uh, can pace, then the AV junction can pace, and the Purkinje fibers. Well, in between those two, the cardiac cells, they have the properties to be able to create their own conduction as well. And so they may actually pick up and try to pace as well. But what ends up happening is if it's really outside of the normal conduction pathway, it starts being very hectic or chaotic, the rhythms. And that's where you get a lot of your crazy looking arrhythmias and things like that, okay? Atrial dysrhythmia, so they're going to occur anywhere from below the SA node to right at the AV node, all right? So if you think about your atria, and you think about the atrial tissue, Let's say if my SA node was like right in here somewhere and my AV node is like right in there, any of this tissue that is electrical in nature around this atria can create a conduction, all right? So there's a new term and I think it's somewhere in here and it may be in a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you. The new term is ectopy or ectopic B, okay? So, in medical terminology, a lot of times, two completely unrelated fields can use some of the same terminology, which in theory would mean the same thing. A lot of it is based in the root word. Um, but if you think about an ectopic pregnancy, what is an ectopic pregnancy? Pregnant, pregnancy. Yeah, 
so a ectopic pregnancy is going to be a pregnancy that's implanted or um, fertilized and <laughs> implanted outside of the uterus where it's supposed to be. All right. So how do you think we relate that into cardiology? Not necessarily the implantation of a uterus and all of that, but the term mm -hmm. ectopic. That's be where it's not supposed to be originated from. Exactly. So an ectopic B or an ectopic foci is going to be an area that is originating a conduction that is outside of the normal SA, internodal pathways, AV node, and so forth, the normal conduction pathway. All right, so that is a term that you're going to hear very, very commonly in this class, okay? Like, we'll talk about it a lot because there's a lot of ectopic beats and you even have ectopic rhythms, okay? That's E C T O P I C, ectopic. All right, up here it is actually right here. When a heart cell contracts or when the heart contracts from cells other than those in the SA node outside of the normal conduction pathway, okay? Sometimes called premature beats because they occur early in a cycle before the SA node normally would discharge. And then this is where ectopic focus or ectopic foci will come in. Y'all ever heard of a PVC? A PVC is probably one of the easier ectopic foci to identify because you got a sinus rhythm just trucking along, and suddenly you got this boom, bam, this big old ugly looking thing that just kind of shows up and then disappears. And what that is is an ectopic <coughs> foci, so just an area in the ventricle that decides, hey, I want to shoot off my own electrical conduction, and it shows up on the monitor. Now, that can become haywire, though, as those continue to beat and try to take over the pacing. That was in the atrium or the ventricle? PVCs are ventricle, premature ventricular contractions. Now we're going to talk about premature atrial contractions here in just a moment. Are they like, is the R just really large and the S is large? Or? Yeah, it's just a big, ugly ventricular like type thing. It... All right. So, now that we kind of know, if I ask you on a quiz, somebody raise your hand, tell me what an ectopic foci is, without looking up here. Somebody raise your hand, tell me what an ectopic foci is. Area in the ventricle shooting off its own beat? Not just ventricle. Um, the PVC is an example of an ectopic. So, we're going to have other atopic areas too. Anything that starts to fire outside of the SA node, outside of the normal conduction and all that, is going to be considered atopic. Okay? So it's like a beat that fires on its own. Yes, it would be a beat, or it could even turn into a rhythm that fires. And it's based off of those properties of. Um, cardiac cells that we talked about first day of class or second day of class, automaticity, <laughs> conductivity, excitability. Basically what in a sense is a is the body's way of having a, a fail safe so that the heart will continue to pump if things get out of whack, but it can get it can make the heart get very out of whack as well. Okay. And it can be from anywhere other than the SA and AV node, or is it between the two, somewhere from? No, it can be anywhere in the heart outside of a normal conduction pathway. All right, so, yes. So a topic foci and a topic B is the same thing? Yes. All right, now this, maybe this will help you understand a little, little bit more. So let's look at one of our first rhythms, okay? For atrial rhythms. This one of our very first ones is going to have a P uh, wave, but it's not going to be similar. Okay, so we've got what's called a wandering atrial pacemaker rhythm, or wa wandering atrial pacemaker. So when the pacemaker sites wander or travel from the SA node to other pacemaker sites in the atria internodal pathways and then maybe even down to the AV node, all right? So, backing up, 
what ends up happening here is that the SA node may fire and then a, a um, electrical cell here may decide it wants to paste. Then an electrical cell here may decide it wants to paste. Then an electrical cell here decides it may want to paste. And a lot of times it just kind of goes in a circle like that. All right? But we know that if the SA node fires, it's going to be positive, round, and upright. Okay? Now, if it fires from these other areas as well, it could be positive, round, and upright, but it's going to look different. All right? And the reason why is if we're looking in a lead two, if we're looking in lead two, and we have our positive here, if my conduction starts in the SA node, the camera has a view of it starting at the SA node, right? If my conduction moves down a little bit and it starts a little bit further down, the conduction's a little bit closer, so it's got a little bit of a different vantage point, so it's gonna look a little bit different, all right? It's like if I had um, um, one of y'all sitting right there and then a clone of you right there and a clone of you right there, and I took a picture, okay? You're going to be the same conduction, you're going to be the same person, but you're going to look a little bit different on the camera because it's a different vantage point, okay? So let's look at some of the rules here for your wandering atrial pacemaker. You've got to have at least three P waves that are different. So when you're looking at your six second strip and we're identifying P waves, at least three of them have to be different. And when I say different, what do I mean? Not upright, present. They might be upright and all that, but what I'm saying is they're not going to be similar. They're not going to look the same as each other. Okay? They may appear upright, inverted, or they may be absent. The passive transfer of pacemaker sites in the atrium and the AV junction. So sometimes this may be because of a sick sinus node. And basically what it's saying is, is the SA node is going to fire and then it's going to, for a lack of a better way to look at it, it's going to delegate duties to the next cell and then the next cell until it comes back to the SA node. What? Yes. I didn't mean to sound rude, I promise. So okay. would a, like a rounded one be a more pointy one be considered different? Yes, I'll show you some examples. The absence of a P wave may indicate a P wave buried in a QRS complex, and we'll see that in some other rhythms as well. But here's the thing about a wandering atrial pacemaker the rate's usually going to be within the normal limits. It may or may not be regular, it may be slightly irregular. A lot of times it's just slightly irregular. But the, the rule breaking here is going to be the P wave. Okay, so for a wandering atrial pacemaker, my rate, it follows the rules, and it might be slightly irregular, okay? But the major rule that it breaks right here is the P waves, because they're not going to be uniform. Now, what about the PRI? It could, if you think about location, if I have a... If I have a pacemaker that starts at the SA node, it's going to take me just a little bit longer to get to the AV node than if I have one that started right here, right? And so what's the PRI? The time it takes from it to get from, in this case, is going to be the time it gets from it to take, um, the time it takes for an electrical conduction to get from its original pacemaker side, right? So your PRI may be a little bit different. Okay. So my QRS though, all of these rhythms right now, my QRS should not be affected. Why? Because we're looking at atrial arrhythmias. And so anything that goes past the AV node to the ventricles, the ventricles are going to react to, but they're not diseased or sick. So they should respond in a normal fashion. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So. What's going to be the main aha thing about a wandering atrial pacemaker? P -wave. The P wave. What is the rule there? Three, three different. Three different. 
you got to have a minimum of three different ones, all right? So a one or atrial pacemaker, can it have an inverted P wave? So it goes negative instead of positive. Yes. Absolutely, it can. All right, so here's an example of a one or atrial pacemaker. I've got this and this one, those, like, if I had those kind of consistent, those aren't that big of a difference that I might not even notice it, but if I notice here, it's starting to flatten. Okay? And then look, my P wave flips, and then it looks a little bit different there and a little bit different there. So do I have at least three different P waves? Yes, I do. Why do you think it flips? Why do you think that it goes inverted? If I'm looking at a lead two, why do you think that it would go inverted? Because it's a negative deflection. Exactly. So with, if that's the case, which way is that conduction moving up the atria? The opposite way. Yes, it's going retrograde or going backwards. So think about it like this. If I've got this... So if my lead two is down here, my positive is down here, right? My lead two, my positive is there. As long as that conduction is going downwards towards that, I'm going to see a positive P wave, right? And then it goes down and it might look a little bit different, but as it gets closer down, this is why you start to see it start to flatten out. But then as it starts and it gets real low, it actually may start going back upwards to try to conduct the atria, all right? So if that conduction is going away from the positive, it's going to appear how? Upside down. Upside down. And now on that very same strip, you may see it start back over, and you may see it flip again, and then start going smaller and smaller until it starts flipping. All right? But all of this is occurring within the atrium. Now, will you see this all the time? No. So sometimes it might just be flat. The biggest thing with this is that that's just an example showing you how they can flip. You won't always see it flipping. Yeah. But what you're going to look for is three different P waves. Whether they're flat, whether they're spiky, or whatever, you're going to look for three different P waves. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can it just be three different sizes of the same? It could be three different sizes. It won't be the same P wave though. Like they could look similar, but it could. They're different. Like, anyway. That's what you're talking about. Like how I get yeah, and all that is is just because it's moving in, moving from a different site. Okay, the camera is placed at an angle, and because it is being created at a different location. It, the camera's picking up just a different vantage, a slightly different vantage point, okay? All right. So, here's another example here. So, if I was looking at this, do y'all see the stars here? Each one of the stars kind of represents an area that's creating a P wave. Follow me? Seen this? Heard about this? Y'all good? So, if I look here, if I were doing my rate rhythm and all that, I've got enough of a QRS right there that I would probably count that towards my rate, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then my rhythm looks regular, not enough for me to like not think it is. But, and really that rates, we'll leave it at that. But, then I go to look at my P wave. So is there a P wave for every QRS? Yes, there is. It doesn't really look like it right there, but it is a little hump. But are they all similar? And they're not, right? Do you see the difference there? Mm -hmm. And so I already know I've got at least three. But now I've got that one and that one. It almost goes non-existent, but then I see it start humping up again. And probably what's gonna happen is it's gonna kind of start the cycle again, all right? But, uh -oh. So question about like it firing. So say one's firing at the SA node and then 
it just happens that this next place is firing next. Mm -hmm. So it, they're not firing at the same time no. as much as just it goes from No, there. it's going, you're going to have your individual conduction. And honestly, Daisy, if you have one that's sitting way up here, it may look very, very similar. Okay. I know that it's kind of hard to imagine steel, but as we get into this rhythm interpretation, what you've got to do is imagine not just a bunch of squiggly lines. Like, I want y'all to learn the the aha moments of these. Like, okay, I know that for it to be a one or natural pacemaker, I've got to have at least three different P ways. I want y'all to learn that. I want you to learn the rules, but I want you to learn why. Why is it doing that? And even if this is something that we don't ever treat, it still will help you understand the electrophysiology and physiology of the heart there. And so why is it doing it? And it's because we're creating a new conduction, and this isn't a normal occurrence. So this is going to tell me that, hey, there's, there's probably something going on. It's not going to be considered a cardiac emergency or anything like that. Um, because if you were treating somebody that were complaining of chest pain and you saw this, this really isn't going to give you any indication of like MI or anything like that, and you would still treat the chest pain, more than likely you might catch this if you're just putting it on somebody, but that's not a normal sinus rhythm, right? Now, at the end of the day, what I'm most concerned about is how many contractions do I have? Right? Because the contractions are what creates the pulse. But you've got to have something that's going to stimulate those ventricles to contract. Okay? So you need to look at this kind of as a road map. So I can look at each one of these, and although I may not can tell you exactly where the location is, I can look at it and tell you that it certainly is a change in location of where the electrical conduction is arising. All right. Remember, your heart is a tangible, physical organ. So remember, though, that this is all physical. Like, And when you're using your leads, you're getting a physical picture of the electrical conduction. Okay. And each one of your positive leads, if I were to change the monitor, each one of those positive leads is going to give me just a little bit of a different look. They look may look very similar. But it's going to give me just a little bit of a different look because the positive electrode is the camera, if you will. All right? So let's practice this one. All right? First off, let's see. Is it a six-second strip? No. Or it's not on our page. Well, Dylan, we're going to have to pretend. So it's not six seconds. We're going to have to pretend that it is six seconds. <laughs> All right, so on our six second strip here, what's my rate? Just pretend it's six seconds because. 70. All right, so my rate's 70. Is it regular or irregular? It's irregular. It does look like it's a little bit off. Yeah, irregular. All right, so what about my P wave? Okay, so let's look at this. So I've got a P wave and I got a P wave. Those look pretty similar. Uh oh, what happened here? There's no P wave. Now, if we were talking about junctional rhythms, which I hope to get to this afternoon, then this might be something else. But because when I go to my next rhythm or my next complex, the P wave is different then I know that it's not going to be a PJC, so don't even think about that right now. Though. All right, but look. Look at that. Look at that. It flipped, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So do I have at least three different? Yes. yes. All right. So on my P wave, I'm going to put differing sizes and shape or something to that nature. All right. So my PR interval. You said sizes or shape? And shape. Yeah. <coughs> so I can technically get a PR off of that, but if you <coughs> put variable, especially if they're not close at all, then that's okay. All right? On this one. 
Does that make sense? Why I might put variable there? Because Yes. All right. But then if I go and look at my QRS, it looks about 0.08 or so. But if I notice, they're pretty regular. They're very consistent. I know this one looks a little bit different, but it's still it, it's not it's still narrow and it's still very consistent with the shape. It's just bigger. Okay, so. 0.08 or so, all right? But the key here is that I've got at least three differing P waves, right? So we're gonna call it a wandering atrial pacemaker, okay? All right, so in order for me to categorize this as a wandering atrial pacemaker, the rate has to be what? Between what? And, uh, 60, 60 to 100. So it's got to be within normal limits because that's going to be important when we go to our next rhythm. <coughs> right, the rate's got to be 60 to 100, and I've got to have differing P waves, at least three differing P waves, right? So I'll be able to recognize a WAP because of the variable P wave. So in, in cardiology, when we say variable, we just mean not the same, okay? It varies, okay? What about the next rhythm? Multifocal atrial tachycardia, or MAT. So we just learned about WAP. Now we're going to learn about MAT. MAT is the same as WAP except the rate is greater than 100. So that means that if I've got a, a rhythm that is greater than 100, what else does it have to have in order for me to be able to call it a mat? Three different P waves. Three different P waves, all right? It's as simple as that, all right? So let's look at this one. All right, so my six seconds here, all right? So my rate is what? Remember, count your QRSs. 120. 120. My rhythm, is it regular or irregular? Irregular. It is? Oh, snap, crackle, and pop. Is irregular. All right, what about my P wave? We don't have this one on here, do we? No, uh, but you got it up here, so. <laughs> I just can't see that foot. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, then I'm asking rhetorical questions and I'll answer them for you. The P wave <laughs> is variable. See there? See there? There, there, there. PRI is variable, definitely. My QRS, just for time purposes, I'm just going to say it's normal because I can see that it's narrow. All right. So I've got the two rules here. It breaks the rate rule. It's greater than 100, and it's got at least three differing P waves. So it is a <coughs> MAT. MAT. It's a multifocal atrial tachycardia. So with the P waves, if you have one like the first one, and then one like the third one. Is there a set, like how many boxes to for it to be different? Does that make sense? Like, like or does, how they look similar? Yeah, how they look similar, but like one's higher than the other. But how do you, I mean, is there a set height difference? No, to it's just shape difference. So you can obviously see that w without even measuring, you can obviously see that there is a slight difference in those shapes and that's enough like it, it it doesn't have to be like a gigantic difference so if, if all of them look identical to those two the rest of the rest of the strip would you say that if they all look the same as those with just a little bit of variance no okay. i wouldn't i would say that that's the sinus tachycardia okay. because that would if they look very similar to those two and, and remember the terminology there because we use that terminology similar, not always an exact carbon copy. 
but very similar. If they all look like that across the board, then that indicates that they're coming from the same origination site. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Now, sometimes, and we're going to get atrial fibrillation here in a few minutes, but sometimes people kind of want to get multifocal atrial tachycardia and atrial fib um, confused. The only similarity there is that it's irregular, okay? But as y'all will find out here in a few minutes, AFib breaks a lot of rules, okay? All right, so besides the rate, the difference between MAP and atrial fibrillation, so I'm going to tell you, um, AFib doesn't have a P wave, okay? 